Old English was also different from modern English on a fundamental level. So fundamental, in fact, that practically its entire grammar system was different. These differences stemmed around the fact that word order was far looser. In modern and postmodern English, word order dictates the meaning of the sentence. It is an analytic language. The words must be organized in such a way to match the tense of the action. Generally, they form a subject-verbs-object order, though with different tenses it can change to something like object was being verbed by subject. However, no matter what, the word order describes the relationships, meaning, and grammar of the sentence. In Anglo-Saxon, on the other hand, the meaning of the sentence is only partially dependent on word order. It is known as an inflected language. This means that it relies on the endings of words to describe relationships, grammar, and meaning. The different case endings of words told the status of the word, whether it was a subject, object, or something else. This inflection was very prevalent in nouns and adjectives. Nouns of Old English were fully inflected. They had four possible case ending groups, and the endings of the word would change to indicate relationship, although the word stem remained fixed. These cases were nominative for the subject of the sentence, genitive to indicate possession, dative generally to indicate the recipient of something, and accusative for the object. This feature puts Old English between Latin, which had six cases, and Modern English, which simply has the subjective, objective, and possessive cases. The element of grammatical gender also had a place in noun inflection. Gender was also mostly indicated by the ending of the word. The way this worked was, not only were there case endings, there were four sets of them in Old English. These different sets were known as declensions. They were known as the masculine A, such as the one seen in this chart, neuter A, feminine O, weak masculine N, and weak feminine N declensions. As the inflection of a noun changed by case and number to fit the situation, its associated gender always remained the same. Because gender was demonstrated through the endings, when the system of inflections weakened around the 14th century, the element of gender disappeared. As previously stated, inflections of nouns also demonstrated number in their endings. There were two sets of endings for each declension to in indicate whether the noun was singular or plural. Adjectives were fully inflected as well. They had strong declension endings, such as those in this example, when alone or describing a noun and these were a mix of noun and pronoun endings. They also had weak declensions, when the noun followed a weak noun pattern. Adjectives always followed the same case pattern as the noun they described, something known as case agreement. For example, they would both be in the nominative case, both in the accusative case, and the like. They would match regarding number as well. The gender of an adjective also corresponded with the noun. Adjectives display another way that word order in Old English differed from Modern English. While word order was generally much looser in Old English, as stated before, it still mattered a little. Particularly, adjectives had to be adjacent to their noun. In the case of multiple adjectives corresponding to a single noun, one or both of the adjectives could come after the noun, unlike Modern English, where both come before.